Institute of Virology and Immunology at the University of California, San Francisco. He's with us now. Warner, hello, welcome to The Naked Scientist. First, can you give us a brief positive history of what actually happens during HIV infection? In other words, how does the virus get into cells and what's its life cycle? Well, good evening, Chris. I'm happy to do that. And this is a, a great, uh, it's too bad that we're celebrating the uh, 30th World AIDS Day, that we haven't ended this epidemic, but uh, the number of new infections are, in fact, declining uh, markedly throughout the world, which is very good news. In terms of the life cycle of HIV, it's, uh, HIV binds to the cell surface, micro-injects its RNA genome into the cytoplasm of the cell, and then converts that RNA into DNA, a double stranded version of the DNA, hence the name retrovirus, reverse flow of genetic information. The DNA is then integrated into our own chromosomes, and then these chromosomes, the, the DNA is then expressed into new proteins and RNA, which is packaged into new virions, which bud from the cell and start the entire infection process over again. And the cells that are targeted are white blood cells, they're CD4, they carry that marker on their surface, T cells, without which the immune system can't function properly, so one logical conclusion is the virus infects the very cells that orchestrate the immune response, so if you damage them, then the immune system is harmed. Correct. But what's the outstanding big question then? But the, the real question is, how are these CD4 T cells dying? It was quite clear that the number of cells productively infected with HIV could not explain, in other words, direct killing, could not explain the massive CD4 T cell loss that occurs during HIV infection. Uh, then a theory was advanced that it's not the directly infected cells, but it's cells surrounding the infected cell, bystander cells that are dying. Our study now shows for the first time that, in fact, it is these bystander cells which are the principal cause of CD4 T cell loss, but they are not, uh, but they themselves are becoming infected, but in an abortive manner, an incomplete infection that arrests uh, early after the virus uh, begins the reverse transcription process. How did you do this work? How did you prove that? Well, first, the, the first key was to use a primary lymphoid tissue. We used tonsil. Um, and uh, in this tissue, we were then able to use the, 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 each of the different types of new HIV drugs that interfere with precise uh, steps in the viral life cycle. We were able to interrupt the life cycle with these drugs and ask whether or not CD4 T cell uh, killing uh, was, uh, was blocked or not. Genius. So by adding a different drug that works on a different aspect of the life cycle, you interrupt at that stage, see if the cell dies. If it doesn't die, that tells you that the effect of that you're seeing the bystander death in a, an infected patient must lie downstream of that blockade. If the cell does die, it's upstream of where the drug works, and that confines the bit of the viral life cycle that must be doing the damage. Right, we were able to narrow in the death window, as we called it, to a step during the reverse transcription process whereby the uh, DNA is elongated into a, uh, a chain longer than 150 base pairs. Now, interestingly, the, uh, so the, 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 one of the real surprises in our study was it's not the virus that's causing the CD4 T cells to die, but rather it's the host cell's response to the uh, occurrence or to the accumulation of cytoplasmic DNA in the, in the cell cytoplasm. Uh, that's what triggers a, a defensive response in the cell in an attempt to protect the host.